Hello and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video we are going to get the tails marked out as well as some of the pins on the carcass joinery. Let's get going. So I've already gone ahead and cut the tails to size. If you're following the cutting list for this project, then these components will be joined together for you to cut down in the workshop to the required size. Obviously, if you've got a miter saw or table saw, you can do it on that. But if you're doing it by hand, then you can do this on a shooting board. Whatever method you choose, make sure that these are exactly the same length because these are gonna be what holds your carcass together. So if one of them was slightly longer on the top than it was on the bottom, then you're gonna have a carcass that's doing that splaying out or something like that. And hanging a door as well as fitting a traditionally constructed drawer is not easy if the carcass is doing that. So make sure they're exactly the same size. So these components are gonna be nested into the side panels using lapped dovetails as they're commonly known in the UK. In the US, they're sometimes known as half blind dovetails. And these are usually found on the front of drawers, but in this case, they're gonna be used to lock the carcass together without being visible on the outside. And while we will be going through this process step by step, I strongly advise you at least have a firm grip of basic through dovetails before attempting this. And also, if you're watching this on my free online school, in the supporting resources, below you'll find that there's a dedicated video for how to cut a lap dovetail. Watching that before embarking on this will really really help you out. So the first thing we need to do on all of these components is scratch a shoulder line around both sides of them which is going to dictate the baseline or how far in the dovetails are going to nest into the side panels. So in this case it's a pretty small one eight millimeters is how far in we'll be nesting. You'll see that on the optional plans that are available for this project if you're following those. And then one by one, we'll scratch this shoulder line round. And then once you've scribed that gauge setting around the end of the tails, do not unlock it yet because you still need to scratch the depth of the pins working from the inside face of the cabinet. So before doing this, we just need to have a good grasp about what is the back of the cabinet and what is the front. So I'm going to put these together so the face sides are opposing each other. So they're both on the outside like that, but the face edges are facing the front. So. That is how the cabinet is going to be going together. So now in theory, the cabinet is laying on its back. Now the front tails actually sit flush with the front edge of the cabinet. So that's nice and easy. However, the back ones, they're actually slightly offset from the back edge. And on the plans, it's by four millimeters because that is the thickness of the back panel. So keep that in mind when you're marking this out. The back dovetails are not going to be flush with the back of the cabinet. I'm going to mark this out by putting the sides up in the vise. So you can just see the face side and the face edge marking here. So that indicates that's the outside and that's the front of the cabinet. So what that means is we can put one of these tails up against the front and then just give ourselves a little little pencil mark to act as a boundary for when we scratch the marking gauge on. Realistically, you could just scratch this entire setting over the top of the cabinet because there's gonna be a top sitting on here anyway and you won't see that marking gauge line, but we might as well make it as neat as possible. As for the back dovetail, I've made this little four millimeter shim. So this is just two four millimeter components stuck together and one of them will hook over the back of the cabinet. And you can see that this one is now inset into the cabinet, raise that up a little bit, to give myself a little lip put the component up against that, and then I can confirm that that dovetail is sitting four millimeters in from the back. So we'll just keep that there for now and give ourselves another pencil mark. And then from the inside face of the cabinet, remember that's the outside face, from the inside face, you're gonna reference your marking gauge and scratch a line between or within that boundary. And you can just confirm everything by setting the dovetail from the inside of the carcass. And you should see that the shoulder line on here lines up with the inside corner and the end of this component lines up with the line that you scratched on. If you've marked it from the wrong side, the offset will not line up correctly. You can see that this is overstepping that line. So next I'll just continue that method of working on the remaining three edges and meet you on the other side. And then after you've done that, really, really important just to double check your offsets. Check that the front ones are gonna be flush with the front and check that the back ones will be leaving you with a four millimeter offset. It's quite easy to get lost in all this marking out. So regular checking is very, very important. 
So now we're going to lay the cabinet out again in the orientation it's due to be in. And it's now time to start choosing which of these we want facing on the front edge of the cabinet and which ones we kind of want to hide at the back. With these components, the only bits you really see are the front edge on the front two components and on the inside you do sort of see the face. If you were to look inside the cabinet and up, which is very unlikely, it's good to just prioritize these front faces and make sure they're nice and clean and they haven't got any sort of weird defects in them. When I'm doing this, I'm purely looking for straight clean grain and seeing if I can get it to get a nice color match with the rest of the components, which I'm actually struggling with quite considerably. So with each of these joins, what we're gonna do is number them from one to eight. Do not feel inclined to label these top right back and back right left and everything like that because all that does is cause confusion when gluing up. When you're gluing up the last thing you care about is which tail is the left hand side of the cabinet at the back. What you care about is which socket fits into where and having a very clear and concise numbering system gets rid of any ambiguity. So with it all still assembled just so I don't get things mixed up we're going to label this one one and then two put that back and then this is also going to be one, going to write it right next to the socket, and two, three, four, three, and four. And then on this side, five and six, five, six, seven, and eight. With regards to the six, I also tend to underline the six because I had a student in the past who got confused between nine and six, even though the joint system only went up to eight anyway, and he was looking for this ninth socket that for some reason existed and it turned out it was just holding the component upside down. So next we're going to begin marking out the dovetails on the ends of these components. By this point it's exactly the same as a through dovetail. You just square along the top and then with a ratio down to the baseline. We're going to be using a 1 in 6 ratio for this because it's quite a shallow dovetail and we want as much locking action as possible. So by splaying that dovetail out more a 1 in 6 should work really well, although it is completely up to you. If you'd rather do a 1 in 8, feel free to do so. Now, I won't dwell too much on this process because we've already covered dovetailing on the Dovetail Box project, and also I've already referenced the previous videos I've done on dovetailing in the free online school, but we will still skim over it nevertheless. So we'll get that up in the vise, find the halfway point, and then measure either side of that to get the width of our dovetail and I'm using a dovetail saddle marker by Veritas to do this and this will scribe the line along the top and down the face as well and then we'll just scribble out the waste area that we're going to be cutting away later on. Right, so those are all marked out to a one in six ratio and are now ready to be cut out with the dovetail saw. So again, just a reminder, this is gonna be skimming over the process. If you want to see this more in depth, then you have to go back and watch the video on how to cut a dovetail joint. Optionally, you can watch the video on how to cut a lap dovetail as well. And like everything is in the supporting resources below. Have a look at that if you're stuck with any of this. But as a quick little reminder for everyone, remember that the angle of the dovetail doesn't matter too much if you don't get it perfect off the saw. What matters is this cut on the end grain is perfectly square. So I'm gonna employ the techniques from my video on how to saw correctly. Cut square across the top and then just double check I'm happy with the angle of the saw and go for it. So I'd encourage you to do this systematically because it helps you keep track of your progress, which will, uh, which will allow you to get the job done a bit quicker as well because you have got eight of these to cut out. And don't drop them like that or else it knackers your dovetails. <laughs> Damn it. Right, and there you go, that is how you orient, lay out and cut the dovetails for the cabinet project. So as I said previously, make the most of the supporting resources available for this part of the project. These joints are essentially gonna be what holds your cabinet together. 
So it's quite important you get them right. And if this is one of the first woodworking projects you do and after assembling it, you realize that they're actually a little bit gappy, don't worry too much because these joints will all be hidden by the top of the cabinet anyway. Of course, we should be striving to get gap-free joints anyway, and like we're gonna be doing lap dovetails on the drawer, so you're not gonna get away with them there. But if this is your first attempt at them, you've got a little bit of leeway here, so don't worry too much. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. You're now ready to move on to the next lesson, which you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left-hand side of the video. We'll see you in the next one.